Hey guys, welcome back to the Spates Water Lad podcast. Time surly talk sport rugby world cup preview. And if you've got a better name for that, let me know on the Instagram page because that is an absolute mouthful. <laughs> but we are at the moment we have been waiting for. 2023 Rugby World Cup is almost here. Feels like we've been counting down this date for a very long time. And of course, I do have my man with me, the man with the most iconic voice in New Zealand. Sport, most people claimed last week. He's over there in France soaking it all in. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. Good to be over here on the ground. The old Waterlad Media Pass still hasn't <laughs> arrived, but uh, fair to say got stuck into a few cold ones last night. So, yeah, perks of the job, I guess, being being the roving reporter. Uh, yeah, a good night last night. We're looking forward to the cup getting underway. What's the buzz like over there? Yeah, it's starting to build. I think most of the Kiwis and Aussies and that will get here today, the Thursday, um, speaking to like the Uber drivers and stuff, they have no idea it's going on. Eh? They're just football mad. They just love Mbappe. They just want to talk about <laughs> soccer. But I was trying to tell them they're good, so they should care about it. And that kind of got them a bit more interested. But we bumped into a couple rugby fans over here, and they were fizzing for it, just saying that Dupont's the best player in the world, which was hard to disagree with. Yeah. But, yeah, I was, I was trying to tell them they're in for a shock, but we'll soon see. <laughs> Mate, you're doing a hell of a job as the Waterlad reporter over there. I'm <laughs> proud of you. It's good to see you in, in the mix over there, so good stuff. Keep that on. But obviously, we've got no games to review from the weekend, so we'll go straight into the preview, starting with the big one that you're going to be obviously um, on the sideline for All Blacks versus France. The lineups are out, um, so we can go through a few of these. No Geordie, um, Anton's in. Um, a few big changes. What do you make of these teams, mate? Yeah, the rumours broke, obviously, during the week that Geordie was going to miss out with a bit of a knee niggle, and unfortunately that's the case. I'm pretty gutted for him just because I think ever since he's moved to 12 some 18 months ago, he's been unreal mm. there, and he's really made that jersey his own. I think he adds another dimension to our team in terms of his playmaking. He's like a third first five out there, but we're so lucky that we have guys like Anton and David Harvilly that you can call upon because what a luxury that is. You know, they're world-class footballers. Anton started in so many big tests, so it's just that next man mentality and another cab off the rank and, and a quality footballer, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked we've got those two in the side, gutted for Geordie. I think the biggest loss potentially is that no Shannon Frizzell. Mm. Um, I just think his physicality in these big games, up against these big forward packs, I felt like he was one of the most missed players against South Africa, and I was really hoping that he'd be back for this game. But at the same time, your boy Kelly Daltons gets a crack, <laughs> and I think... You know, he's been unreal at Super Rugby level for so long now, and this is his chance to kind of own that six jersey. So I'm really excited for that as well. What did you make of the 23? Yeah, it's an interesting point how they spoke about um, they wanted to play a quicker game, especially with Dalton at six. So um, interesting dynamic there. They want to try and play fast tempo. Um, Anton Leonard Brown, I, I, I thought they might have gone Davey at 12, but. Um, he's obviously only played sort of 40 minutes for Tasman, so and they probably feel like he might just be slightly underdone. Um, and obviously the big news of today or yesterday was Nawara um, ruled out for the comp, so um, who they're going to call in for there, obviously that's um, all being rumoured at the moment. Whether that is Ethan Blackadder, he's going to make his appearance over there sooner rather than later, just with the split they've got. They've already got Caleb Clark, D-Mac, Geordie not playing this week, and I feel like they've got enough depth there. But they could go someone like Shooter, who's probably the next cab off the rank, unless they go to a Dallas McLeod with um, a bit more of that midfield cover. So um, I'm predicting they're going to go Ethan. Um, it might be Sammy yeah. Finau, who's actually over there as well, I think. Um, mm. So he was arguably the next cab off the rank at the time. But uh, watching Ethan play for Tasman in the weekend, geez, that got me excited. And I just think he's far too good not to be at a Rugby World Cup. Who do you think? You're obviously good mates with Shooter, so... I mean, you'll be hoping he's over there for a few more tickets for you. Yeah, yeah, obviously on a personal level, hoping he's getting over here. It's expensive over here, mate, so it'd be good to have the boy over. He's got the big match fees, you know, so he can shout a couple cold ones. But I tell you what, if even Blackadder makes the plane, that has to be the best big call you've ever made. It would have happened within seven days. <laughs> that would be unreal. I think that that's a legit shout too because I think he's one of those guys that, you could chuck straight into the starting lineup and you'd get everything from him straight away. Obviously, if he was healthy, mm. he'd be over here. Or if he was healthy the whole year, sorry, he would have been over here already. So 
Mm. I think he's an instant guy that you can chuck into the team and he's ready to go. So, yeah, I think it could have been a great call from you, mate. I can see that smile on your face. You're hoping it comes true just for the bragging rights. <laughs> You're acting like I, it's the first one I predict. I predict. Oh, here we go. Turn it up. Turn it up. <laughs> mate, I've been on fire since we started this thing. That's why we've got so many people tuning in and Beauty. appreciate everyone for listening. But who, who are your key men for this game? Who, who's going to decide it for you? I think, obviously, Richie Moanga is going to be key. I think... We need to play that fast tempo like you mentioned. That's the mindset going in. I think Yako mm-hmm. Piper will allow us to do that. I had a crunched a few numbers, call me the poor stats man, but I think 88% <laughs> winning record under him. We've only lost one game with him in the middle. So Wow. Yeah, we love having Yako as a ref. He kind of gets the way we want to play. So I think just that dual pivot is going to be key. Hopefully we can just get fast ball, play on the top of them, and then we'll be unstoppable. But obviously... That old cliche up front, it's going to be a massive battle. So I'm looking mm. forward to watching our Ford pack go to work. I think they have a real chip on their shoulder, eh, from being dominated against the South Africans. And we obviously saw the reaction from the Kiwi fans. We're pretty quick to criticise. But like you mentioned, they're probably holding a fair bit back. So I think we're going to see a fired up performance. Yeah, mate, that's going to be a massive battle up front. And what a stat from you, by the way. 88% with Yako in charge. I love that from you. It gives me a little bit more confidence. The guys I think are going to sort of be a big part of this game is the wingers, to be fair. I'm looking forward to the battle. Pano, I think, is the best defensive winger in the comp. The All Blacks will have to be careful how they attack down his edge. Loves getting in that passing lane. He'll be looking for intercepts or shutting off overlaps. Um, so that battle on the wings is going to be really interesting, especially with the way our wingers are defending at the moment. Still passive D, which um, gives me a fair bit of anxiety around how we're defending on the edge. Uh, we've got guys like Mark Talia and Will Jordan who can defend really well on the edge, but looks like they've just been told to be really passive and make sure they're getting to that last man. So um, that's a little concern for me watching, but um, the X factor that both of those guys provide, Mark Talia and Will Jordan, and in the air as well. It's going to be an important battle to be winning. So um, I think they're going to be the key guys that play a big part in this game as well. But like you always mention, that battle up front is going to be crucial. What are you predicting? What's your score? And give me your first try scorer. Because I did see not just fantasy rugby's out, but also um, like a predictor game as well where you pick a mm. winning team and the score and a first try scorer. So we'll go with those because um, we'll start there. Yeah, I obviously I'm backing the All Blacks to do it. I think it's going to be close, though. What score did you go? Off the top of my head, chucking it out there now, I'd probably go about a 23-15, 23-12 type of setup. I think wow. it's going to be reasonably low scoring, and that first half is going to be a real battle. I think we'll kind of get them from that 50-minute onward mark, but the key thing for me that I'm worried about is the heat over here. Like. Mm. It's crazy at the moment. I think come kickoff, it's going to be still 29 degrees. It's 34, 35 during the days, which obviously takes a bit of acclimatizing to. So mm. hopefully the lads can go the full 80 because just walking around, she's nasty <laughs> enough, let alone playing a full game of footy. But I'm hopeful, hopeful that we'll get them in the second half. First try scorer. Let's go with the little Rico Ioani special. Oh, Why not? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe Anton dishes him up one perfect try assist just to settle the nerves early. Oh, That'd I can great see stuff. it already. Well, on my um, predictor, I've gone for the All Blacks by seven. Um, nice. And I went Will Jordan, the safe option to score the first try. The man loves a try and he'll get his fin up for sure. Uh, next game, obviously, Italy versus Namibia. Um, what do you make of this game? I think this is a great chance for Italy to show that they are a step up from what they have been in the past. We were talking about it last week, saying that they're a good football yeah. side, but they probably won't push your All Blacks and your France as close, but still demand the respect. And I think people will realise this weekend, once they put a score on Namibia, that they are a genuine football side. So, yeah, I think they'll do them in that kind of 30 to 40 point range. Um, oh, mate, you're right on. I've gone 35 exactly. Oh, so, mate, yeah, we're in sync. I'll split your margin. We're in sync, mate. I love <laughs> That's this. That's a good sign. Who's this. your first try scorer? Oh, I actually even looked at the team, to be honest, mate. I actually had a couple cold ones last night, and that really uh, preoccupied my time. Maybe you could tip me in one here. Mate, the guy I've gone is Monte Ioani, but like you, I haven't mm-hmm. seen their side. So, another big gripe here with um, World Rugby, and I've said it before in Super Rugby. 
why can't we name these teams earlier? It breaks me that we can't see these teams. All the all the players are named. Uh, they all know who's who's playing, but they just hold it off for everyone else. Um, doesn't give us a chance to pump up the game. Uh, it's terrible for fantasy rugby because I'm trying to organise my squad and I only can see three squads out there. Uh, we just need to know early, and there's no reason why they don't share that any earlier. So um, there's my first gripe of the um, World Cup. We need to make the teams released earlier. Yeah, I feel like this is a 2022 Super Rugby gripe that's been carried <laughs> over, mate. So it's good that you can vent it on here. But I agree, like a teamless Tuesday, like they do in the NRL. Like you mentioned, yeah. the players, they find out on the Monday, right? Probably even before mm. that, they get the nod that they're starting. So it's not like you're going to shock anyone by naming your team. Like Everyone can kind of work it out. Plus the rumours go out early doors of who's yeah. playing anyway, so you may as well name it. Yeah, 100%. Hopefully they hear this and um, make some changes before the end of the World Cup. Now, that would be power Surely. from the Water Lad podcast. Surely. <laughs> now, the next game, we called a big score on that one, Italy and Namibia. I'm predicting the biggest score of the weekend in this next one, Ireland versus Romania. What are you predicting here? Yeah, I think this is going to be big as well, unfortunately. They were saying it's going to be 34 degrees during this game. So, again, extremely hot. But I'm expecting the Irish to make a real statement here as well. I feel like they're being underestimated in a weird way. Mm. A lot of people are kind of saying that South Africa, France, All Blacks. But I think people have forgot how good Ireland have been. And in a weird way, I almost hope if the All Blacks can't do it, that the Irish can get up just as a bit of a reward for their dominance during this World Cup cycle, because they've been so good. So I expect them to make a real statement here, and maybe in that 50-point margin. Mm, I've gone 45 was my exact margin on that thing, and I've gone James Lowe to score the first try. Like so that. on the left wing, loves loves to roam as well. He'll be busy, um, and no doubt he'll be in my fantasy side when we get to that bit a little bit later. But I agree with you around the Irish, like, no one's really talking about them. Um, they're, they're definitely sliding under the radar. Once we get to quarterfinals, I'm sure everyone will be um, standing on notice. But I rate them as, like, when you watch them play, they're one of the best teams in the world, hands down. Um, could easily go all the way. So um, they're not a team of Oz, Oz All Blacks I'd be wanting to play in that quarterfinal, to be fair. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. And, yeah, I don't know much about Romania. It's another one that I'm going to – Look forward to learning about over the World Cup, but um, Ireland have picked a pretty strong side, so I can see them running away with that with a big score. But the next game, Australia versus Georgia. Now, this is an interesting one. It's, when you look at it initially, you think, oh, easy one for Australia, but Georgia are a pretty good side. Um, they're ranked just below Australia on the world rankings. What are you picking here? I think Aussie will get them maybe by 15 to 20 and it'll look fairly comfortable on the scoreboard towards the end, but I think it's going to be a real battle for them. Obviously that forward pack for Georgia is just going to rip into them and this is one of those games where you can suffer a big injury because it's going to be physical. So I think Eddie Jones will be nervous about this one. I'd love to see Georgia get up (laughs) and get the win. That would be massive and there'd be nothing better than seeing the Aussies go down in week one because, geez, would they panic. (laughs) But, yeah, I'm expecting in that 15 to 20 mark, the Aussies will be too good over the duration of the game, but I think they'll be really pushed. And you'll be straight to that press conference if Georgia won 100%. Oh, mate, well, you've already said, so I, I packed the boxing gloves, I'm ready to go, I'm just waiting for the approval to come through from you, but yeah, I'll be baiting him, of course the Waterlad fans get to send through whatever questions I ask, so I'll be expecting some doozies, and yeah, Eddie will be expecting me as well, because he's a big fan of the show, so he'll be keeping an eye out. I don't know if he will be after Monday, because I had Danny Cipriani on in the weekend, and he's um, told a few home truths about Ooh. Eddie Jones, and I can see that in, all in the papers at the moment as well, what a couple of snippets that have come out of his book. So I'm not sure if Eddie's going to be a huge Waterland <laughs> lad fan after the episode on Monday, but it is a good one, so stay tuned for that one. But this margin, you went 15 to 20. This was the first time we're a little bit off sync, because I've gone Aussie by 14. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> close, close. Slightly off. Mate, that's, mate, we've got work on, which is good. You can't be nailing it first up, so I'll take that back to the drawing board. But you obviously think it's going to be really tight as well? Yeah, I think it's going to be tight initially as well. I think there's going to be probably two moments of brilliance from that Aussie side that will um, 
break the game open and get them the victory and first try scorer. Now, I really struggle with his last name, but Mark, the right winger, hit me with it because it's such a hard one to read. Yeah, I battle with that one as well, but geez, he's a freak of a footballer. And I think, he's good, eh? Yeah, we saw through Super Rugby that he was talented, but I almost feel like he's taken his game up to another level. He's so dangerous. He gives me like Mark Talia vibes. He always beats mm. that first offender and likes to get quite busy around the ruck as well, which I rate from a winger. So yeah, I, I rate that shout. I also think Corin Betty's always a good call as well, just because... Yeah. Yeah, he's built like a brick. I was speaking to Shooter about his debut, and he just said he tried to put a shot on Corin Betty and reckons his shoulder's still sore. So maybe the old Georgians are going to find out that you don't want to put a big shot on that bloke. Yeah, mate, he looks absolutely made of rock, that guy. He's um, incredibly powerful, so that's a great shot as well. The wingers, they're always a good shot when you're doing these um, first try scorers and these tipping comps because um, they obviously score more than anyone. Next game... England versus Argentina. Now, this is a tough one. England have come in very scratchy. Argentina have been playing some pretty good footy. Who are you picking here? I think Argentina are going to get them. If Farrell was in this in the team, then I'd probably back England to get it done. But wow. I, I yeah. haven't liked what I've seen from them over the past kind of two months. I feel like the public's turned on them a little bit as well. And you can't help but feel the pressure. So I think mm. Argentina are going to come in, obviously with that underdog mentality, but I believe they should be favourites. And I'm backing them to get the win. I think it'll be close in that three, maybe five point margin. There'll be one score in it. But I'm backing Argentina to pull this one off. And they're such a passionate side that I think this is really going to ignite their World Cup and they'll go on to win their pool. Mate, it's like you've got my log into my tipping thing. I've got Argentina by three. You are oh, right this on. Is, no, this is, <laughs> this this is, is crazy. <laughs> and I've just got... for full transparency as well, I don't. I'm just <laughs> rolling this off the top of the dime. Zero prep. So that's good stuff. <laughs> you're on fire, whatever you're doing. You should do this every <laughs> week. But I've gone Pablo for first try scorer. Um, absolute lad. Wasn't really sure. Obviously, their team's not out, so I couldn't see who's on their wings or anything. But I know Pablo will be in there, and he's always good on the edge and um, can get into the tight stuff as well. So he's a good chance to score a try. Um, but like you say, England are under so much pressure. I can see this game sort of going two ways. Like you get to the end of it and say, oh, England, they're back. Um, well, they put in a really good performance there. They're going to be a hard team to beat. Or... England are basically done. I think if they lose this, they're going to really struggle to get out of their pool. So massive game for them um, first up. So one I'll be watching with a lot of interest. And another game I'll be watching with a lot of interest is obviously what lads' second favourite team, Chile, up against <laughs> Japan. So um, obviously there's a few Chile um, listeners listening to it this time. I uh, checked the ratings. We're not on the top 10 yet, but um, that's the goal throughout the podcast to get Chile's number one rugby podcast and um, to start off with Japan um, what are you picking? Well I think we spoke about Japan the other day that they're not quite the side they were in that last World Cup cycle so I expect Japan to be Mm. too good but I think Chile will probably get a bit closer than a lot of people expect Mm. it was great to see the Chileans just flood in they're massive on their water lad (laughs) like you had current players commenting mate which is huge so uh, you're right tapped into the Chilean rugby scene. But, yeah, I think Japan will get them, again, probably in that 15 to 20-point margin. I think it's going to be a little tighter than people expect. Yeah, OK, I've gone seven more than you there. I've gone Japan by 27. Um, I think they just got too much X factor across their board. Um, but like you say, Japan have been struggling. I think this game might give them a little bit of confidence. Um, 27 point win margin. Uh, pretty happy with that. I've gone Masarewa, the dangerous man out on the outside um, to go first try. But yeah, like you say, it was surprised to see a few Chilean um, players jump into the World Lad support. And I um, might have to try and get one of them on for the preview show throughout the World Cup. Surely, yeah, live cross. I can meet up with them over here, have a couple oh, cold yeah. ones, you know, <laughs> warm up the throat and then go from there. Oh, how good would that be? Oh, that's <laughs> podcast goals. Um, okay, and the next game is um, a massive one, actually, for both sides. Toughest pool of the competition, South Africa and Scotland. Um, what's your thoughts here? 
Yeah, my big call the other week was that I think Scotland could really push them, and I I had them on my on my bet slips. I thought this is paying way too much. I'm gonna jump on board, but after seeing that performance last week from South Africa, it's kind of got me backtracking a little bit. I'm hoping that Finn Russell, the bloke you said I look like, can pull the strings. And uh, have you had any um, comparisons to him? Yeah, has anyone? Uh, nah, no one's no one stopped me in the street, unfortunately. But I need to yeah. get some Scotland kit and start wearing it yeah, out. You know, I'm thinking maybe a tracksuit, even though it's boiling hot, <laughs> just to really ram home that I'm Finn Russell. So I'll be heading out to the merch store today to see what I can get my hands on. But I've seen a few South African fans head to toe in their oh, yeah. kit, so they're always passionate, and I expect that they will get the job done. But I think it's going to be a seven pointer. I think it's going to be tight. And then maybe last 20 minutes, South Africa will assert their dominance like they often do with that bench coming on. Mm. 1 to 23, they'll be too strong, but I'd love to see Scotland get up here. They're one of those sides that I really enjoy watching play footy. They are willing Mm. to chance their arm and roll the dice, and I think that that makes for a great watch. But unfortunately, I think the South Africans will just be too clinical. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm fully with you. If the forwards can dominate like they have been with that African pack, they should just be able to grind down um, the Scottish side in a pure test match footy. But um, if Scotland can play high tempo um, in the heat, like you said it is over there, um, that might suit them and they will might be able to get some quick ball and sort of get that pack running around a little bit. Obviously they bring on their second pack just after half time, but... Um, they have gone for two backs this week. There's a massive uproar about that um, 7-1 split last week, weirdly. I thought um, it was fair play and a high-risk move. Like As a coach, if you lose one of your backs early, you're a, you're in a fair bit of trouble. And um, Sometimes you do lose two or three, and um, they would they could have had all sorts on their back line um, taking that risk. But some people are calling it to be illegal or um, all sorts of going, stuff going on. But um, I think it's fair play, and I see they've gone for two backs on the bench this week, so a little bit uh, more common, but still quite unusual. Most teams would go the three. Yeah, I noticed, I think it was Quagga Smith who came on to the bench, right, as the seventh forward, and he was wearing, like, jersey 24. Was that a really <laughs> late call, perhaps? Did someone go down, like, the day before in training or something? Oh, it seems like maybe it was, it was a late shift because – Surely you'd get a jersey, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I didn't, I didn't notice that at all. I just saw the big uproar about it. So, yeah, it probably makes more sense than anything. They would have had one bat go down in the warm up, and um, he was probably the only one ready to go who didn't have a massive night with Surly the night before. <laughs> Mate, it can get you. You're only human. <laughs> and I've gone Malcolm Marks for the first try score. I feel like it's going to be on the back of a rolling mall um, up in, in that corner. I don't think the Scottish Mall D will be quite as strong as the All Blacks one in the weekend, even though they were giving away a fair amount of penalties um, to keep that line clean. Um, I think he'll cross over off the back of a mall, so there's my shout. In the next game, Fiji-Wales. Now this, um, obviously months has been ruled out, gutted for him. World Cup, we just talked him up all last week around how good it was to, for Fiji to have him at 10, running the cutter, he's looking good. Um, obviously, um, Titi Talia will come in, um, the other 10. He can play as well, so um, I don't think it's going to affect them as much as everyone's sort of talking, But because, um, geez, they've got some dangerous backs and Lucy's who can play on the whole 15 who can just play footy. What are you picking? Yeah, I think if Wales want to get and, and allow them to play fast footy, then they're going to be in a world of trouble, so... They've kind of lost that underdog factor beating England in a great, like, it was an amazing result. But at the same time, now Wales are going to be on high alert because they know that the Fijians are the real deal. It would have been kind of nice if they'd just come in under the radar and really ambushed them and pulled off the upset then. But I'm, I'm still backing Fiji. I think they can get the job done. You mentioned months is out, and that is heartbreaking because he's been so good for them. And just listening to their coach speak, you can tell that as a team, they're gutted as well. So Mm. I thought uh, Ben Vullivulla, North Harbour, great, might have got the call up, not to be. But yeah, I'll I'll back them to get the win in that three to five point range again. I think it's going to be really tight. But I'm backing Fiji now. They seem so much more of an 80-minute side than in the past. You know, you almost trust them to get these big wins. So yeah, Mm. I think they'll start their World Cup in the best way possible. How about you? 
I'm agreeing with you again, mate. Jeez, we've we've agreed on everything. I've gone a slightly bigger margin of seven, but I think Fiji will be. Um, I think one thing that will suit them is going to be that heat that's yeah. over there, because um, obviously, as the Crusaders, we went over to Fiji where it was hot, and geez, they love playing in the heat. So I think that'll really suit them a lot more than it would for the Welsh side. So. Um, and I just think they've got so much X factor across their back line. First try score I've gone for, our man Habossi. He can create something out of nothing. But man, they've got the likes of Radradra and all sorts in that um, squad ready to create absolute havoc. So it's going to be a hell of a battle. Um, Wales are a good side. I thought they played well against England um, in their warm up games. But um, I think Fiji will get the job done and show us why they're the number one ranked side in um, that pool. No, nah, for sure. I'm looking forward to this game. In a way, it's outside of that All Blacks French game. It's, it's the game I'm looking forward most to watching just because of the Fijians. You never quite know what they're going to dish up. So, yeah, I can't wait for that one. Sunday morning, my time. Should be a good watch. Or Sunday night, my time, actually. Should be yeah. a good end. Okay, well, the one thing that I really did want to um, try and give you listeners a bit of insight to is this fantasy rugby game. So, so stoked to see a fantasy rugby game with um, – World Rugby setting this up um, for the World Cup gives you massive interest into the games. Awesome with mates, try and challenge them who's going to finish on top. Um, just being able to follow a player throughout a game and watch watch them as they make big plays or mistakes and really ride home their performance as you watch the game. So I guess there's a few key rules that I was pretty keen to share because as I've seen through this, um, going through the fantasy thing that – um, there's a few things that people have missed uh, by the looks of it by looking at the most selected players. So I guess the first rule to understand with this fantasy rugby is that you have unlimited trades, which is very unusual for a fantasy game. Most times you'd get two or three per week. This fantasy, you've got unlimited trades every week. So you can basically fully change your side um, every single week depending on matchups. It's pretty ruthless, mate. You can... Uh play the ultimate selectors here, eh? If someone doesn't live up to the hype, you can cut them. But also, I quite like it because there's quite a few teams, especially in this first week, that aren't lacing up. So it gives you the ability to roll out a whole new 15 in in week two once these teams play. Um, Me, personally, I I always battle with the trades. I always blow them early, so (laughs) it's... It's great to see this. It should help out some rookies as well. I think people that are playing for the first time, that could end up being their best friend. Yeah, 100% because because like you said, the buys, teams are going to rotate so much when they play the lesser teams. Um, it would have been really hard to put a number on the trades. Um, I think what they've done is probably right, make it unlimited, but um, you've got to make the most of that by playing the matchups every week. So I'm seeing a lot of guys playing the the stars, loading their teams up with the best team um, that they're hoping to just carry through the whole comp. But um, you may as well find the matchups each week and just fully change your side. And I think in round one, obviously you're going to want Italians, Irish, Japanese, and maybe to an extent Australians, but um, more those first three because I think that's where the points will be lying, especially with that Irish side. So... um, yeah, I've loaded up there and my captain is definitely Irish. We'll get to that soon. But the second thing is, I guess, is the point scoring system. So I guess the notable points to mention is that it's 15 points for a try, which sort of sets the scene. Um, you've got nine points for a try assist, um, which is usually um, scored as the last pass. It'll be interesting to make uh, watch that over the um, first few rounds to make sure that's how it's um, awarded. Line breaks, seven points, so which basically makes a line break try 22 points instantly, chucking a few defenders beat along the way. We're looking at some big scores. Also one point for every 10 running metre. Um, I think five for an intercept as well. So an intercept try where you beat a few defenders, um, you're looking at a big, almost a 50-point play. So there's some big points to be made, especially on the attacking side. But what I like about their scoring system is they've evened it out with Um, for the locks and the props by giving you five points if you get a line-out turnover. Don't often see those in games, uh, uh, in fantasy games. So if you can pick someone who's going to pick a few line-outs, there's some points to be had. And every line-out takes obviously one point. Flankers are getting their uh, points with turnovers. 
four points for a turnover, one for a tackle. And obviously the front row, now they get points as well. If they get a scrum win, they get three points the whole front row. So they've tried to spread it across quite evenly. I think they've done the scoring um, really well on the on the comp- on the the game. So uh, looking forward to seeing how these first few weeks pan out. Uh, what do you make of those scoring options? Yeah, I rate it. And obviously it makes the game, adds another level of interest to it. You know, you could be parked up on the couch hoping that Australia can pull off the line-out turnover against Georgia (laughs) and making a real scene when they do because there's five points in the bank. So it kind of gives you that extra investment and makes you ride home the smaller plays as well. Mm. So, yeah, I I rate that scoring setup. Obviously, like you mentioned, 50 points for an intercept, it's... (laughs) The uh, first five's eyes will be lighting up, mate. You and I both. Be you know, we don't like to tackle. You go for the intercept big time. So that could be a 50-point play. Can you stack your whole team back line with pens, load them up, intercept specialists? How good would that be? But the other side of it is there is negative points as well. So in particular kicking, because most fantasy teams would usually load your side up with as many kickers. But... You want your kickers to be kicking their goals or else you're losing a fair amount of points. Um, you're only getting two for a conversion and negative one for a miss. So it um, doesn't really make it worth loading your side up with kickers. Um, but negative points for missed tackles, um, turnovers. Obviously the big one, red cards, negative 10. Um, and I'm guessing that includes an upgraded one as well. So that will be one to watch. But, yeah, like I say, very impressed with the point scoring system. So one to follow and make sure that you've got players that are sort of suited to that. And the other one that they have in this game is um, power play. So six boosters, they call it, um, to use throughout the comp. You've got to use these wisely. You get three over the pool plays and three in the playoffs. Uh, one is a triple captain, so triple points for your, for your player. Um, you've got to use that wisely. That's a huge momentum swinger if you can nail your triple captain. Um, you've got a super kicker, which is double points on that kicker, um, but also missed. So if he misses them, um, you could have a tough week with your super kicker. And also a defensive king. So that's double points for turnovers, intercepts, tackles made, or tackles missed. So super hard to predict intercepts or turnovers, but um, you probably, for that one, you want to be choosing a player who's making big tackles um, and very rarely misses them. Maybe in a kick heavy side, but. Um, where you're thinking to use your boosters throughout the year. Mate, well, as soon as you mentioned power plays, my eyes light up. Mate. That's a <laughs> word that just really gets me going. So that's good stuff, and it's creative from them as well. I really rate that. It's tough on the kickers, eh? You miss a point. I can imagine some people sledging them in the stands that have just cost <laughs> them some fantasy points. So that adds a bit of extra head noise. Not only are they trying to get their team to win, but they're also trying to ensure that fantasy players around the globe are happy. Um, the French fullback, he's pretty sharp off the tee, and I think they'll be backing themselves to go up in threes this week as well. So that would be a good shout. But like you mentioned I think you've got to load up on these teams, these guys playing some of the lesser nations. And if you mm. triple captain someone that scores a hat trick, you could be in for a heck of a day. 15 points for a try. You'd yeah, be almost uncatchable way. off the back of week <laughs> one. You're gone. But oh, the one thing I'm going to do with it, I'm going to just see this first round. I'm not going to use any of those boosters this first round. I want to yeah. get a feel for how the points sort of fly. And then next week, I'll be looking for a, a heavy matchup. Maybe a game where I think there's going to be a 50-point-plus victory and I'll be yeah. trying to load up on the kickers or wingers and something in that game. But um, a couple of things to look out for because I, a few mistakes. Obviously, new fantasy players will be playing for the first time, so even the experienced ones will fall for this trap as well, I'd imagine. But save your team. This time in this fantasy game, you have to save your team when you make tra- changes. It's already happened to me a couple of times where I've – Uh, changed and mixed my squad and I forgot to push that save button so make sure when you make your trades um, save your side before you leave it because you don't want to be thinking you've got someone he scores a hat trick you've triple capped in him and you didn't save it don't come to me at the next week and say that's what you did because I have warned you here also picking players who aren't playing that's probably a massive one because there is four sides that do have a buy the Samoans Tongans Portugal Uruguay, if you've got any players from those sides, um, get them out. I see Fekitoa is the second most owned centre. 
So there's a huge error from a lot. I think it's 20% of the sides who have Fiki Tower on their side. Geordie's the third most owned centre. So come on, guys. Uh, if you're in this Water Lad Conference, you need to be better than that. Can't have your midfield of Fiki Tower and Geordie. That's an absolute crime with unlimited trades. So. Um, get the guys in there that you need. And also the last common mistake is going with your heart, not your head. Um, some players are made for fantasy, um, some aren't. You might love the guy, um, but if he's not a fantasy player, not everyone is, I wasn't, um, you've got to make sure that he's not in your side. Um, no matter how much you love the guy, go with your head, go with the numbers, and you will have a good season. What do you make of those mistakes, Surly? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big, hard, overhead type of operator, so I feel like you were speaking to me directly there, mate. Oh, um, I was. Yeah, um, in the NRL terms, you know, I'm big on your Bunty followers and co, who sometimes don't even make the 17, you know, but they, they have a special place in my heart. So, yeah, I, I definitely need to, to keep that in mind. Um, and, and also, like you mentioned, just having the unlimited trades, it's so good because you can roll out these whole new teams and really cater them to that week. So I think when I was doing my team the first week, I um, maxed out on Fijian players. I was going yeah. all in there because I was expecting a lot of tackle breaks, offloads and, and racking up some good points there. So keep that in mind too. I think there's a limit on how many players you can have from each team. So yeah. don't don't try roll out a, a full 15 of uh, one team because they won't let you do that. So mix them up. But, yeah, use this first week as, as a bit of a testing ground. Um, find some players that you like and, and that are going to score some good points. I think it's going to unearth some hidden gems as well. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, you'll you'll find a wee player in one of the lesser known teams and you'll fall in love with him because he gets you a few fantasy points. He's a he's a workhorse from Chile and um, then you you become a fan for life. So I, I can't wait to get stuck in and see who comes up scoring big points after the first round. But um, we'll quickly go through uh, maybe our captain and three other players that we think is a good buy for this week. Um, obviously, we can't be sure on our teams yet because... World Rugby have not made teams be named earlier, so um, teams are just going to hold off until they have to name them, which absolutely breaks me, as you know. But um, I'll, I'll start. I'll start with my captain. I've gone for the Irish winger, James Lowe, like I spoke about, against Romania. I think he's going to be busy. He's going to be on the end of a couple. I'll be surprised if he doesn't score three. And there we go. There's 45 points at least to start. Double it. We're looking at a huge start for James Lowe. If I knew and was confident in this game, I would probably use my triple captain, but I'm going to save that. But I'm expecting James Lowe to go hard early and have a big start. Who's your captain going to be? Yeah, I was thinking maybe a, a Samu Karevi type of operator, um, mm. just because I, I really rate his football. He's in my midfield with Semi Radradra, so I've gone the full oh. Fijian flair there. I mentioned I tried to stack the team with 15 Fijians. I found a bit of a loophole <laughs> where you can pick some Aussie <laughs> ones as well, which for me, I think that's play on. So I might go Samu just because... I expect line breaks galore, um, and he's a heck of a footballer on his day, so mm. hoping he can come through. But James Lowe, when you mentioned it, I thought that was some smart footy from you. But there's a bit of heart in that as well, I think. You know, Tasman, man, he, we all know you're a big fan, so you've comboed the two of them well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've purely gone in my head. Your one sounds way more hearty with Karevi in the midfield <laughs> against, which could be a tough Georgia. I don't know, well... We'll have to see how that one's going to go. But the other person I've gone, this one's probably more heart as well, Jamison Gibson Park. I've paid the $9 yeah. for him. Um, I just think in this game against Romania, oh, in the heat, he will absolutely relish it. He loves, he's super fit. He'll find some nice support lines in that heat. Um, he'll have a few snipes. He'll pick up a few try assists. And I, I predict him to be the highest scoring nine of the round. I know DuPont's up there. He's around the eleven dollar mark. You've got to pay the big price for him. Won't be paying that against the All Blacks, but I'll be picking him up at some point, especially when they're playing the lesser sides. But for me, Jamison Gibson Park is my nine, and um, head and heart say that pretty strong. No, that's a good shout. I was going to fork out for DuPont as well. I made the rookie mistake of just loading it up with superstars and running out of the budget <laughs> with about six players still to fill. So had to go back and, and reassess there. And Dupont was one of the players that, that got cut. So I do like Jamison. I, I think he's so important to that team. Um, he's almost like another 10 out there for them. So 
I expect him to play big minutes in, in crucial games. Ireland have a, a pretty tough pool as well with South Africa in there, so I don't mind picking teams where they're going to have to roll out that best 15 for at least three or four pool games. I know you can trade guys, but when you find someone you like, the old pick and stick can come in quite handy. So, yeah, I don't mind picking players that are going to play key roles in, in a tough pool. Yeah, I, I expected them to sort of rest those guys for this one. They've obviously got some massive games coming up, but um, good to see Ireland obviously want to come out hissing from the start and make a bit of a statement against um, these guys. So um, I guess the big concern with Jamo, some Jamison Gibson Park is that he gets the early um, shower at sort of 40, 45 minutes and... He only gets 100 points instead of the couple hundred I'm expecting. Oh. So, I, <laughs> hey, you set the benchmark high. <laughs> Another one I've chucked out there is, uh, we spoke about him before, is my first try scorer, but Masarewa. He's only $4.50. He's an absolute bargain. He's been lighting up the Japan Top League for the last few years. Uh, I think the Chileans will find him very hard man to tackle. Um, he's a tackle breaker, line breaker. He, he'll probably score a couple. Um, I'm expecting a big score from him as well. Yeah, that's a great shout. I'm actually jumping on my phone right now to uh, chuck him in my team because uh, that, that is a great <laughs> bargain buy. I've just written him down in my notes, so I'll be doing that once this wraps up. And that's why you tune in, you know, to get the heads up on, on selections like that. That's a, that's a great decision from you there, mate. So, yeah, Masare will now be on the wing at $4.50, a great buy. Absolute bargain. And I think another one you mentioned before was uh, Ramos, the French um, fullback. I think he'll be one to keep a close eye on over the competition. Obviously, he's a goal kicker, very sharp shooter. Um, so, a fullback, I've actually got him down to be my um, top point scorer in the competition. Fullback goal kicking for a quality French side. Um, I, I've gone him to be my top point scorer and my top try scorer. This was in the other game. Um, I've gone for Will Jordan. A um, little bit of the heart there because it's super hard to predict the top try score, but the man can yeah. cross the line. He finds his way to the try line almost every week and he only needs to be playing in a couple of these um, lesser games where you know he could score three or four pretty easy. So who have you gone for top point scorer or try scorer? Yeah, it's a tough one because like you mentioned, with the try scorers, I was going through some of the players, but you just don't know if he's going to play against the Namibia or, or whatnot. And that's where a guy like, if Caleb Clark gets the start, he could easily bag a hat-trick and going to yeah. shoot himself right up into contention. But you definitely want a player from these top sides that's going to go right the way through the tournament. Um, I rate the shout on the French fullback too because... Yeah, sharp shooter. I, I when Intermac was ruled out, I thought, great, that's a massive blow for them. But then you see him just step up and bang everything over. Yeah, so they've missed, lost, he? yeah, yeah. They've, they've lost nothing in the goal kicking department. So that is a good shout there. Top try scorer. I was going to go on Mark Talia, but I think genuinely that they won't play in those big games. Mm. So you, you want someone, probably a Cheslin Colby. Let's yeah. go with the cheese, old Col oh. Colby cheese. Back him in because. I think South Africa, you know, a tough pull, Ireland and Scotland, so I expect that they'll have to play their best team for the majority of those games, and they're also a team you see playing finals football, so mm. hopefully Cheslin can got dot down, but yeah, there's some good chat around like a Malcolm Marks, something like that as well, I yeah. think hookers are in for a massive tournament. Yeah, mate, they're all good shouts, and Colby, yeah, he's sort of gone under the radar a little bit, the kid can play, man, I love watching that guy play, so I'm looking forward to seeing him go. Um, we've gone to the Instagram for some questions. Was, was a little bit of a mix up. We basically nailed them all off. Um, I guess the last one is which player would be the biggest loss for their team throughout this World Cup? Who do you think for you? Which team cannot afford to lose which player? Man, this is a tough one because straight away your, your mind jumps to the pivots, the playmakers, because they kind of pull so many mm. of the strings. But just on a New Zealand sense, someone I would hate to lose would be an Adi Savia. I think. Just his leadership mm. without even being the skipper is massive to our side. Obviously, we don't have the biggest four pack going around, but pound for pound, he's one of the strongest players in world rugby. So he's a real follow me type of operator. And he's one of those guys that the players turn to when the, when the times are tough during games. So I think if we're going to go all the way and match it with your South Africa, your France, your Ireland up front, Artie's going to be key for us, so I'll chuck him in. And again, he's another bloke that has a special place in my heart, so mm. I've got a bit of heart there as well. How about yeah. yourself? 
Mate, he's also in my fantasy team too. He's my only All Black this weekend in my fantasy side. So he's just he's just one of those special players who can um, he finds points and fantasy all over the show with turnovers, line breaks. He can do it all. He's he's such a talent. So um, looking forward to seeing him do some of his best work on the big stage. So that's a great shout. Um, I think the two for me um, would be Sexton for Ireland. I think if they lose him, his his game driving and um, the way he controls that side is just world class. I think they'd struggle if they do lose him. And I think Dupont, um, having already lost Intermac, if French lose Dupont, I think they might just lose that little bit of X factor, which they um, rely so much on. Man, he, I think he's the best player in the world. So um, if you're going to lose that, um, it can't help your team's chances. But um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting World Cup. Can't wait to get through this first round. Um, see what scores come out of it. See what fantasy points come out of it, and see how you pull up after this first game in Paris. Yeah, hopefully, I'm I'm hoping to find some early form. If last night was to go by, then <laughs> I think I'm off to a good start. But you don't want to peak too early as well. You know, come that final pool game is where you want to start flexing what you've got. So yeah, hopefully she's she's an uphill trajectory from here, but. Yeah, you gotta you gotta avoid um, Irish, Kiwi, Aussie pubs. There's a few of them around, <laughs> and we seem to be the biggest weapons. That's for sure. You know, the French they like to sit out, have a rosé. They start early. They start yeah. at midday with a rosé and, and a and a ciggy. They're big on the darts over <laughs> here, so you kind of avoid that. But then they also don't go out until about one or two a.m. So I like to yeah. start early, knock off for a sleep, and then go out again late. Whereas us Kiwis, we're, we're more just keep going through. So it'll be interesting. I might have to change the game plan. <laughs> Mate, you've done a hell of a job to get up at 6am over there after getting home at 4am and talk some absolute sense and real facts throughout this um, Rugby World Cup <laughs> preview. So appreciate your efforts, mate, and I'm obviously looking forward to chatting with you next week and um, reviewing this first round and previewing the next. Yeah, hopefully reviewing a big all Blacks win as well because this will set the tone right if we win this one then everyone will be well and truly on board that the All Blacks are going to win the thing so that'll come with its own pressures as well but I'm really excited for this game obviously the atmosphere here is building and people are kind of treating this one as the final first up Um, the French while they may not know a lot of them may not know what's actually going on over here at the moment they all know and they all love the All Blacks so they're seeing this as that game where if if the French can win this I think it'll really ignite the tournament over here and everyone will jump on board because it will be massive news Mm, mate how good you're getting me right up the man with the most iconic voice in the country speaking absolute (laughs) facts I saw that I saw that it was good it was a compliment and then a bit of an underhand blow as well just being like I thought he was about 60 years old so I rated that Um, so look you always gotta gotta find the compliment and everything so shout out to that punter (laughs) appreciate it mate catch up next week how good legend